Torah. Just yesterday was Yom HaShoah V'Agvura, the day of Holocaust and heroism, as it is known in Israel, and perhaps should be everywhere else in the Jewish world and beyond. To not only, and I say these words very gingerly, to not only focus on loss, but also on heroism, on the redefinition of what it is to stand as a person of faith in the Jewish community, to recognize that history has not been kind, and to stand strong in the face of it, to build ourselves up to be stronger both on a national level and spiritually, individually. All of that is the transformation that Yom HaShoah demands, testimony and growth and learning and response. As Viktor Frankl, a very famous survivor who created a school of therapy called Logotherapy, um, suggested that there's a difference between stimulus and response. We have the power and the right and responsibility to be part of our own response to whatever stimulus is happening. He came out of the most horrific of circumstances committed to healing. Let's be committed in that way too. Between Yom HaShoah, just yesterday, and Yom HaZikaron, next week, and the day after that, Yom HaAtzma'ut. For those who are unfamiliar, Yom HaZikaron is Veterans Day in Israel, but it's more than that. It recognizes all those who fell in the establishment of the State of Israel, in defense of the State of Israel, and victims of terror. The day after Yom HaZikaron is Yom HaAtzma'ut, Israel's Independence Day just one week apart. It creates a continuum of moments, unlike anything, anywhere else really. It only has one comparison, at least in my heart. The journey at an earlier part of the Jewish year from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur is considered, all of it, the high holidays, the Yamim Noraim, the days of awe. And the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are called Aseret Yemei Tshuva, the ten days of repentance, the ten days of return. Well, here we are with a week or so between Yom HaShoah Vagvura and Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaAtzmot, and these days to a modern Jewish conscience feel, I think, like a modern high holidays. These are the days that test our people and remind us of our vitality the rebirth of our people after almost losing our place on this earth. What would we call it? What would you call it? Between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are the 10 days of repentance. What are the days between Yom HaShoah Vagvura and Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzma'ut? And we'll talk about those other two days when we get there next week. In Israel, there's literally a heref ayin, a blink of an eye from Yom HaZikaron to Yom Ha'atzma'ut. It is incredible. Perhaps the right term, Laurie, I see what you're saying. It could be the 10 days of survival, but I have to say, even though that is of course true and not to be underestimated, 10 days of survival feels like, like that's only one facet of it. Perhaps it's the 10 days of life, the 10 days of recommitment, the 10 days of rebirth, I don't know what to call it, but what a powerful thing it is, friends, for you and me to be in this day, the day after Yom HaShoah V'Agvura. What do you do with the experience of yesterday? Yesterday at UJA, we had the true honor of, um, of, of being with a survivor who shared her testimony in such eloquent power. Um, her name is Eva Bender. She is a resident of New York. She told her story with detail. That was, of course, difficult, I'm sure, in ways I can't understand for her, and demanding of all of us, but we sat, hundreds of us, listening and listening and learning and taking it in and committing in this very fragile moment to being the bearers of testimony. All too soon it's going to be on us. My children will be the last children to hear survivors speak in person. There's no way around that, friends. And so what do we do as bearers of testimony, as we go from such a day to such days? 
how blessed we are as a people to be heading in this direction for our children to know that the world once was not as it is now and that it is better now. How important to remember, friends, the miracle of our rebirth, even as we remain incredibly concerned about our sisters and brothers in Israel and this experiment in process that we call our homeland. What a powerful thing it is. What a gift it is. What beauty we get to be a part of. And oh, how ragged the journey toward it. So friends, I, I can't let Yom HaShoah Vagvura go so quickly. I don't think that's what we're supposed to do. I'm still feeling its energy. And I think I'm supposed to. And perhaps that is its placement as it leads my eye to look at Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzma'ut. In fact, the choice of the day the choice of the day, friends. Yom HaShoah Vagvura, I think I shared this yesterday, but it bears repeating. Yom HaShoah Vagvura could have been a lot of different days because the Holocaust did not happen in a day. And what led to the Holocaust did not happen in a month or a year. It was the worst buildup of terrible anti-Semitism over millennia. And it hasn't completely gone away either. Yom HaShoah Vagvura, there was a debate, should it be placed on Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av during the summer, where we commemorate not only the destruction of both Jerusalem temples, but also many hard moments of Jewish history. The early chief rabbinate in the state of Israel debated and said, no, it doesn't fit, it's too big, it's different. And there could be a debate around that theologically, ideologically, ritually. But they decided it shouldn't be on that date. When should it be? And they wanted to commemorate a different posture, a different moment of Jewish history. It could have been the day that was chosen internationally for International Holocaust Remembrance Day. But that's the day that Auschwitz was liberated. And the liberation of the Jews is how the world chooses to remember the Shoah. And it is important that the world remembers the Shoah and the world's responsibility towards every vulnerable people. But that is what another did for a Jew. Yom HaShoah Vagvura commemorates the rebellion of the Warsaw Ghetto heroes, Mordechai Nalevich and many others, saying, no, no, we will not go gently. No, we will fight. And the image of self-determination, the image it, uh, encased in bronze, whenever you go to Yad Vashem, or if you go to Warsaw, the site of the former ghetto, there is a memorial that is set up there. One side of the memorial is a relief from the Arch of Titus, with Jews bent back, carrying our holy relics out of Jerusalem, being driven into exile. The other side of that memorial in Warsaw, and side by side, at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, is of Mordechai Nalevich with a bare chest, a Molotov cocktail, a pistol in the other hand, and Jews all around with rippling muscles, knowing that the way forward with dignity is strength. It is a complicated thing to do, to name all of this, given that as a traumatized people, we can still act out of our trauma, even when we have a homeland and an army that is complicated, and the ethical dimensions of power require our attention. But I share all of this in the hopes that we can reflect during these days of life, of rebirth, of commitment, of survival, of contemplation, of pride, of testimony. Let's think about what it means to be a people who has the responsibility to be strong, and the responsibility to use our strength with ethical thinking, with kindness, with compassion. We have learned so much. Do we remember what we learned? These are days for that kind of processing. And I bless you to take the time. I bless myself to take the time to really contemplate what all of this means. We'll get back to our Parsha tomorrow. But for now, the echoes of Yom HaShoah 
and the whiff of the beauty, the scent of Yom Azikaron, the tremendous sacrifice it has required to rebuild and rebirth our people. Let's be blessed to take this journey together and to do better and better and better, fulfilling our ancestors' deepest hopes. Here we go. Sing our way into a good day, friends. Bless you, friends. See you tomorrow.